Hi there, it's Luke here again for the M5 Stack official channel. And this week we're going to be having a UI Flow lesson which will focus on one cool new feature of UI Flow. The very first lesson in our UI Flow for Beginners series was the Hello World program. Most of us native English speakers may take it for granted that the majority of programming languages are in English. And our first Hello World program is in our language. But what about for everyone else? Well, often there's a little bit more involved in displaying a language that is not in the typical alphabet, such as Japanese or Chinese or many of the Indian languages, or even Spanish or German, which use extra accents over the top of the letters to denote a different pronunciation. Many early computers could only display the English alphabet, Later, though, advancements made it possible to display all kinds of languages. One of these was Unicode. In a previous MicroPython lesson, we talked about ASCII. Originally, ASCII only included the English alphabet, but then was expanded upon to include all of the different languages, using Unicode and its different encodings. Now it's possible to use Unicode to display different languages in UI Flow. So let's see how it's done. Since this is a pretty new feature, you'll need to make sure that your M5 stack has at least 1.5.4 firmware and that your UI Flow desktop or online version is set to beta. Once we're in the beta version, we can drag a label onto the UI Flow UI designer. Then once we click on it and click on the font list, we now see at the bottom Unicode 24. Okay, now let's test it. Let's go into UI, select label, then drag a label show block. And then here we can either copy and paste from Google Translate or perhaps some website, or we could use the input on our computer to type some foreign language. I'm first going to try it in Chinese. Hello world in Chinese is Ni Hao Shi Jie. Now let's run that to test. And there we have it. Why don't we try some other languages? How about Japanese? Here I'll add an extra label and then duplicate this. Change the label to label one. And then hello world in Japanese should be Konnichiwa Sekai. Okay, what else could we do? I'll drag another label in here. Now let's give Korean a try. If I remember right, this should be Anyong Se Sang. Now let's have a test of that and see how it works. And there we go. Seems to be having a little bit of trouble with the Korean there. So maybe not every language is supported, but it will improve as we go along. So what's Hello World in your language? Why don't you give it a try and paste it in the comments on this video? I started thinking that maybe it would be a good idea to use the M5 stack to make some kind of language learning app. I thought a good candidate for this could be Hiragana or Katakana in Japanese. These are the alphabets we could say that stand for all of the syllables in the Japanese language. Hiragana is generally used for words of Japanese origin, and katakana is used for words of foreign origin. How about we give katakana a go? Firstly, we need to create a list. We'll create an empty list and assign it to a variable called katakana. Now, we need to copy and paste from a katakana list or directly input using a Japanese input source. Either way we do it, this is still going to take some time, as the katakana contains somewhere between 50 and 70 something different characters for the whole range. Once we've created the full katakana list, we'll also need to create a list of all the romanized equivalents of all the katakana symbols. This can take some time. Creating lists in UI Flow is a little bit time-consuming, 
and definitely are motivated to learn how to type out lists in Python, which is much quicker. Once we're done with creating these colossal lists, all we need is a simple bit of logic. First we'll create a variable, which will be the index in the list. We can call it something like j, i, etc. Then we'll set that to zero. Make sure you put both of your lists below the setup block and add the variable block that we just created below. Next we need to add a loop and inside that loop we need to assign that variable j that we just created to be an index in both the Katakana list and the equivalent Ramaji representations list. We can do this by going to variable, creating a new variable called Kana and another variable for the English equivalent list, which I'll call English. Now we need to go into the lists and choose this block in list get. We'll duplicate it for both selections and then enter the equivalent list name into each of those sections. Then in the particular index, we'll use the J variable that we created. Now, all we need is two if blocks. Basically, if we press the A button, then we'll cycle backwards through the list. If we press the B button, we'll cycle forwards through the list. So we duplicate both of those blocks then go back into the variable section and then change the choice in the list that variable j by minus one if we press a and by plus one if we press b this will allow us to cycle back and forth through the list now we'll make sure to set our labels for every time the variable j is updated and we're going to use the two labels because we will have the katakana and the english side by side now we'll get those labels to display the current kana and the current english equivalent and we'll repeat that for both of the if conditions and there we have it now if I press the A and B buttons, I can cycle back and forth through the list of Kana. I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I hope you have fun with this new function. If we took a little bit more time to go through this code, we could create even a flashcard system. Make sure to share your ideas for this language-based app down in the comments section. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.